We're going on a hero quest. It's Amigos, episode 392. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Hero Quest. Mm. Hero Quest, a game based on a board game. Yeah. You know, Aaron, do you remember the very first time you played a board game? Oh boy. <laughs> You're really having me go back in the Wayback Machine there. Probably the first time I played a board game. We used to have an old, uh, um, what was it, Parcheesy? Is that? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was I one of those there. gimmicks. <laughs> I mean, but Parcheesi is a board it's game. It's a board game, yeah. We had a, mom and dad had a set. It was like Parcheesi on one side and checkers on the other, mm -hmm. you know, or chess. Mm -hmm. So, but as a kid, I used to, I didn't know what to play him. So I would just take the pieces and put action figures on there. And, dude, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. <laughs> so probably the first time I played a board game, but I had any idea what was happening. I mean, I'm sure I played Candyland and stuff, mm -hmm. but I do remember playing Monopoly. You know, I remember playing Candyland when I was in, like, grade school. Mm -hmm. So that one, too. One of those two. You know, we're, we're around. We're in the midst of lots of people that are real, real into board games. It is strange. It's yeah. a whole it's a whole new thing. Most of our friends are into board games. Yeah. And they all, to a person, despise Monopoly. Why is that? <laughs> well, you know how these... They're because they're elitists. Let's face facts. Gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. They don't want anyone to have any fun. God forbid if you whip out the Uno deck. They look at you like you've... <laughs> Came from the devil. Uh, but uh, a lot of these guys, our friends are seasoned gamers. And so they like the German way of board gaming. Mm -hmm. Complex, deep, intellectual, thought-provoking games that involve lots of uh, pieces mm -hmm. and lots of cards. Lots, lots of, of time. Lots of little wooden figurines. Cubes, big, weird board. Meeples. And also, it, that's one of the things. That, it, it is, today's game is a perfect lead into it. A lot of these games that come from overseas, they don't have English on them. They've just got pictures that kind of tell you what to do. It's mm -hmm. that old shtick. Yeah. You know, and so when, that's great unless you're trying to figure out what you're doing. Then mm -hmm. it's not so good. Hit the destructions out. Do you have a, cl a favorite classic board game? You know, not the Euro games, but the old school games. <sighs> I'd have to, let me ponder that for a minute. I mean, I, I'll tell you mine. Oh, go ahead. Thinking. Yeah, please. I'm a sucker for Clue. Clue is or, an, that's an excellent choice. Because. I like the idea of the, I like the backstory. Somebody's yeah. dead. You got to figure out who it is. Yeah. Murder mystery. I like the idea of going through this house, you know, and, and investigating what's going on in these different rooms. I've got the old fifties board that the art's really cool. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I just think it's a great concept for a game. It's a game that everybody feels like they're into. You never get into a point in Clue where you feel like you're losing and you're just playing for nothing. Everybody yeah. feels like they've got a chance. Until they fa until they screw up. Then right, out. and then they're out. No, listen, Clue's a good, <laughs> great choice. That's one I always enjoyed. Uh, and also it had cool pieces. How many games that come come with like eight murder weapons? Exactly. Part of the, yeah. Part of the and thing. they were like metal too. Little yeah. metal gun. And uh, I like Clue a lot. I also used to play, uh, you know, I always wanted to get that game Mousetrap. Remember that? Because oh, yeah. on TV. I had that, but I never knew how to play it. I yeah, just no one ever played it. Said, yeah. They just put the thing together. Mm. And it never quite worked no. right, but it was still... Turn the crank and snap the plank and put the marble right in the chute and watch it roll and hit the pole. The trap is set. Here comes the net. Nice, boat. Wow. Of all the dumb things you remember. Yeah. It's like you could almost make a rap to that if you I, wanted. That's I, a I, later. I, That's, I will. Is it on the album? The boat, the unreleased boat <laughs> it's album? It's side but, you know, when it comes to playing games as a kid, the one I played the most was Sorry. Mm, I'd say that yeah, was probably one. That's a great one. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And also, the one, uh, what's the pop -a -matic Trouble. game? Trouble. Mm -hmm. I played that one a lot, too. Mm -hmm. So those are two I used to play quite a bit. And the thing is, everyone had them. Yeah. You know, so, like, it, everyone knew how to play them. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that those are two. Now, as obviously, you've played a lot more board games over the years. What are your what are your favorites now as you're an adult? These days, you know, I'm a sucker for a lot of the games that our friends don't play anymore because they are they think they're overplayed. Like Ticket to Ride, I yeah. still like Ticket to Ride. I love that. I play it on my phone all the time. I like Settlers of Catan. I still play that too. <laughs> Power Grid is a good one if you've got time. It's a longer one. You know, it's one of my faves. Yeah, because it's one of the few I'm good at. But I'll tell you, the game that I like more than Power Grid is the sequel that doesn't get talked about as much. Factory Manager. It's also very good. Yeah, I do like that one. Puerto Rico, I think it's a really Puerto fun Rico. game. I like the card game based on Puerto Rico, San Juan. Yeah, it's good too. Yeah. But I like the main game more because it's more in depth. Mm -hmm. uh, we played a lot of stuff here recently. Uh, house on the uh, it was a house on the hill. Yeah, 
the uh, what's the, there's also a Cthulhu version mm-hmm. uh, of where you play. They're sort of the same game. Those are kind of fun. Uh, the boy likes them. So yeah, I still play a modern game occasionally, but it's it's just about finding the time. Yeah, I mean, you used to be you used to play every week, right? Well, when I <clears throat> switched jobs to a different city, mm-hmm. I never passed where the games are going yeah. on. So that was I was out. Yeah. I still play. You know, Brent, Jamie, and I still play every other or every third Monday, and uh, it's a it's a good time for me because Jamie is the board game man. Every time he comes over, he's got I've got six new games. Yeah, you know, I, God, how much and money do you think he spent on games every year? Well, you know, they come in and they go out because he resells stuff that goes out of print. He's very uh, he's very smart, smart yeah. guy, Jamie. Now, let me ask you before we get into it. Th- this game, of course, based on a a pretty famous board game. Have you played the HeroQuest board game uh, in the past? I I never have I played it. I never yeah. even heard of it because I thought, remember, I, I was like, this is the game that Brent used to collect. But that was a whole different game. Yeah, that was the Hero Clicks game or whatever no, that thing's called. Escape. Hero Escape. Yeah. Yeah. Hero Escape. I, so I had a friend that loved this game and he gave me all of his, when he got married, he gave me all of his HeroQuest stuff. Was this Hose? No, it was Pat. Mm. And so I've always felt bad about this, actually. But I was really desperate for cash. Mm-hmm. So. Twenty years later or more, I've still got all this Hero Quest stuff, and he's like, "Listen, I want to buy all the Hero Quest stuff back." I was like, "Why?" He goes, "Because you know why? Nostalgia. He want right. to play with his kids or whatever." Now, if I'd been a better man, I'd be like, "Here, take it back. I don't need it." But I looked at what it was worth, and I'm like, "Holy crap! Really? I could sell this for yeah, it was worth. And this is it's way more worthful now." Hmm. But I was so desperate for. <laughs> I was like, "Man, I'm gonna lose my car." So, so I'm, I worked a deal with him, a money deal. Mm. And I, but so, so he's you got sold your buddy that gave you these <laughs> things. Yeah, I, this was a him. long time ago, to be fair. But I was really screwed. Mm. He understood. Mm. He had tons of money at the time. Yeah. So absolutely. there you go. Yeah. So, but he, now he's he's got all the. But he had that and a couple of sequels to it. Mm-hmm. And I have played it a few times. So I did have some. But it had some. But this prior wasn't a, this wasn't a game that you 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 and Pat as youngsters gathered around to play. No. You know, Pat's big game was uh, um, Fortress America, stuff like those big, epic, like... It was like an Avalon Hill game. Well, no, they were more like, I think Milton Bradley made them, but they were those big games that, like, it took, like, four days to play, Mm -hmm. you know... I didn't have that much time. Yeah, I don't. That's too hard to remember what's going on. Yeah, I can't control. I tend to lose forces. my train of thought whenever you're controlling Listen, massive amounts. of My forces. train of thought is a circular track that goes around the room. <laughs> yeah, I have no room for that. Some of my brain, but well, Aaron, you know, this week we have uh, we have no news. We are going to do a little bit of unboxing, but first, let's jump right in to our game of the week. Haunting love theme. Yes. From Hero Quest. That's actually a pretty good tune. You but I hope you like it. So we're talking about Hero Quest, the video game based on the board game. I always like these. And I like the reverse too. As me and Brittany on ARG, where you take a video game and make a board game mm-hmm. out of it. Uh Hero Quest released in ninety one. Uh and this is a uh one disc game, max of four players, or one person can control the players, depending on which, how you feel like doing it. Uh, and this was developed by the good folks. Well, it may have been developed by the good folks at Gremlin. The development of this is a little sketchy. They know who worked on it, but I don't know if you could say it was a Gremlin product. They did produce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gremlin, of course, they've done tons, including the Zool games, Supercars, Play Night from Outer Space, Hate is one of our favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, Norman Golf, for whatever reasons. They've done a lot of stuff. Plus, they did the sequel, Lotus. They done tons of stuff on 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 the uh, on the Miggy. This was coded by Michael Hart, who also worked on the sequel. He worked on Mig Twenty Nine. He worked on a game called Necronom, which that sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So there's two games I want to play in the future: Necronom and Plan Nine from Outer Space. Absolutely. Those are both be good ones. By the way, Necronom can great movie if you like Jeffrey Combs is in it. Graphics on this: Jason Wilson, uh, who worked on Diggers, uh, Euro Soccer '88, Horror Zombies from the Crypt. That old standby. Mm-hmm. It's funny how those things come back around. Yeah, it needs to stay down. <laughs> Laser Squad and Pac Mania, a bunch of stuff. And the music, uh, Barry Litch, who worked on a lot of stuff, including the uh, very famous Lotus 2. He's song. one of the big guys. He's one of the big he guys. Is. He also worked on Switchblade 2, which we haven't played that one yet. Silkworm uh, and the Pegasus game we played a while back. So, And also the God Awful Nightbreed game, one of the worst <laughs> games ever. 
Uh, and the box on this, uh, Lee Edwards, which the box on this is pretty much a lot like a board game box mm -hmm. art. Um, so, Boat, this game here was released, as you would expect, on everything, because they were going to they were gonna take off on this thing and get as much action as they could. It's on everything you could think of, including the Acorn Archimedes. Uh, there was a DOS version. Now, the conversion notes that they have on uh, uh, online state that the Amiga version was based on the PC version, but they uh, they do they don't look that much alike in a lot of ways. They sort of do. The structure's the same, but I played them both. I don't know about that. Mm. Like the background graphics are totally different. Mm. For example, so that's I don't know. You know, you never know who comes up with this stuff. Of course, this was based on the. Uh, Milton Bradley game, which was Games Workshop. Games Workshop, how familiar are you with Games Workshop? Well, they are the company that's behind the Warhammer series, right? Well, you, did, you, didn't, you didn't give them enough evil dap. Yeah. Because these guys are the most litigious scumbags in all of hobbying. These uh, Games Workshop, they rule their licenses with an iron fist. And low be the hobby shop or game store that doesn't do what they want. Really? You better put your, their crap front and center. You better have the signs up. I mean, they will, I know, because I talked to guys that ran hobby stores mm -hmm. and stuff. They were jerks. Mm -hmm. They will, And once they yank you out of the pool, you're done. Because that their stuff, they know they're going to sell a lot of that stuff. They're British, aren't they? They're a British outfit? I think I'm so. I'm pretty sure they are. They are tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. So there's a little tidbit for you. So... Let's talk about what this game is, Boat. It's actually, it's a very simple game in a lot of ways. You are given a, a choice of four types of warriors, and your job is to fulfill these little quests that are available to you. Uh, and you do that on an isometric um, fog of war style, or, or like a... Uh, Visual. You want to help me out here? Yeah. How would you explain how this would work? So the, this is a, your, this is your classic isometric game that you might find on the ZX Spectrum. It is. It was. By the um, way. This is a head over heels Batman. Take your pick. Uh, this is this is that viewpoint. So you're basically looking at one room at a time. Yeah. You are provided with an in-game map, however. Thank God. And uh, <laughs> the in-game map basically re reflects the board that you would have if you were playing the board game. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so, what you do in this game when you when the game pops up, you're given uh, a four visual things that you can click on. Of course, they don't tell you what they are. One of them is to choose uh, the types of players you want to be involved in this particular uh, round of the game, and then uh, you've got a screen that lets you go through and but use money to purchase items for those guys. Mm -hmm. You've got a load save thing. And then there's a fourth mystery square at the end. And what that's there for is to load the expansion, uh, expansions for the game. We'll get into the expansions in a little, in a little bit. Uh, so once the game starts, uh, the whole premise is there's, a, there's an opening backstory to this. And the backstory is it's the old, it's the old martial arts slash wizard standard. This guy had a student. The student was real aggressive. He taught the student. The student went and read stuff he wasn't supposed to read. He left and became a super powerful evil guy. Mm -hmm. And the good wizard was like, no, no, no. Don't do that. The bad wizard was like, screw you. Let's have a battle. They had a battle. It was sort of like a draw. Mm -hmm. And the good wizard, who's your teacher, withdrew. The bad wizard withdrew. And now you're going on missions to sort of, you know, stop this guy from to go take him out, mm -hmm. basically. That's it. And when I say missions, they're sort of they're not really related for the most part. There, you want this is role playing in the loosest sense of the there, word. There's not much overarching story, right? Here. Exactly. Uh, so once you've you've got so this game was obviously in, in real life you could pick multiple players. So how does that work in this? Well, what you do is when you when you pick one of your four players, I believe you've got a uh, you've got a barbarian, uh, an elf. I believe there's a dwarf in there, and there's a I think there's a wizard. wizard. Barbarian, and elf, yeah. dwarf, and wizard. the elf and the wizard have magical mm -hmm. spells. I like the elf's more like a cleric, and the wizard's obviously a wizard. You can pick. You can pick all of them. You can pick one of them. You can pick any number of them. It's like you pick one. And this game works on a turn basis, where you literally there's a spinning gold piece, but it's it, it's for all intents and purposes it's a pair of dice. Mm -hmm. And when it comes out, you click on it. It'll stop with a number, and that's the amount of movement that you can take that round, okay? 
Uh, again, this is isometric, so your everything is based on grid, and you just it's just like you were playing the game. You move your guy five or eleven or whatever, and as he goes through this game, as you switch from screen to screen, uh, whatever you're getting to will appear. Right. So, and if you come to a door, if you open the door, what's behind the door, you'll go in there and it'll appear. So it's you can't look ahead. Mm -hmm. Now you can surmise things from looking at the overarching map. Uh, which is you're supposed to, I guess, sort of. And then uh, the dungeons are basically pathed to where you sort of have to see most of them most of the time. They'll put little rocks and stuff in the way, although there are uh, powers you can get that let you pass like pass through stones. One that You can literally go right to the side of a room, mm -hmm. which is cool. That'll cut off some of your time if you don't want to go through all the encounters. As you go through the game, uh, you will encounter a multitude of things. You'll either come across traps, right? You'll come across doors. You'll come across rocks. You'll come across uh, enemies, okay? And you'll also come across paths that just have arrows sticking one way, which means they continue forward. Mm -hmm. These are visual aids to let you know how the path goes on. And then um, you have several actions you can take on your round. You can move. Of course, you can always check the map. If you've got magic, you can cast. You could also search for uh, secret doors or traps, and you could also open treasure that you find. If, if the treasure thing, there's a little icon of a, of like a box, and if it opens up, if it turns on, that means that you can get some sort of treasure. Mm -hmm. Okay, it. You could also attack. You could end your turn. I think that pretty much covered all the things you can do. Mm -hmm. When you come across a creature, multiple creatures. Uh, you will then uh, can go into combat. Now, unlike, say, modern Dungeons & Dragons, where they have a thing where, like, you're locked into combat, and this, you just leave. Yeah, you can go right around. Away. You can literally walk all the way around the monsters. If you get out the door, they just stay in there. They don't mm -hmm. do nothing. Uh, but you can go up to them and attack them. Depending on how deft you are or what your weapons are or what potions you have, you'll attack them either one time or multiple times. Mm -hmm. When your turn ends... It'll be that if you pick more than one person, it'll be the next guy's turn. You'll do the exact same stuff with him. Do or go wherever you want. You don't have to keep them together because again, this is theoretically you could be playing this with four people who are all doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. now, you just all share the controls, and then uh, at the end of everyone's turn, the monsters get a turn. So any monsters that you've encountered that can do something pro that is good for them, like the, the, for example, if you leave your barbarian in a room and there's a monster, the monster can come up and attack the barbarian. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go, when there's an attack, you go to like this a real cheesy attack screen where it's just basically you and your opponent on this like tiny little grid, and then he'll just whack you or you'll whack him, and then up at the top it'll ha say basically how much strong strength you've got. Uh, uh, it, it also there's also little icons how many attacks you've got to take or how many you've got to give, and then you'll get attacked and you'll either not die or you will die, and he'll either not die or you will die. Then that will be over, and then a new round starts. Does that pretty much sum it up for you? Yeah, that sums it up. So, having not played this before, you open this up. How easy was it for you to figure it out? And then how, how much did you uh, enjoy what you saw? This is an easy game to learn. Yeah. This is an easy game. You know, we played a lot of these tactical simulations before, whether yeah. we're, you know, the XCOM games, games sort of like that. This is, I, I, I consider this to be on the much more elementary level. This is Aaron level yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, instead of having a, a number of action points to spend on each round, you basically, your, your, your coin flip slash dice roll tells you how far you can move. Yeah. Once you're done moving, you can search... You can attack if there's something there. Yeah. Or you can hit the next turn button. Yeah. Those are your options. And I will say, I should mention before you go on, that if you decide to search before you've taken all your turn or a t or uh, or loot treasure before you've taken all your turn, then you that you don't get the rest of your movement points. Right. right. So uh, this game, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is a bad game. Yeah. This is a faithful, you know, I did some research uh, on the Hero Quest board game. And, of course, I watched the... Famous YouTube review of uh, of Hero Quest, which has millions and millions of views, which is quite hilarious. Uh, and uh, this is a faithful adaptation of this game. This game, in board game form, is a simple game. Yeah, uh, this is a game designed for you and your buddies to play. You know, romp through a dungeon, beat up some bad guys, get some treasure, upgrade your loot or upgrade your equipment, and keep on moving through. Yeah. You know? 
Uh, this game has everything that the board game has. Everything. This game one-ups the board game because you don't have to have one of your friends play the evil wizard. Right. Uh, the evil wizard is computerized in this game, so all your buddies can play with you. Um, you know, if I was a kid and I was a big fan of Hero Quest, I would be real happy with this game. Yeah. Um, I thought that the UI was good. I like the the UI kind of reminds me of Populous a little bit. Yeah. In that you are playing on a board. Uh, when you are playing, you see you're you're seated at a table, uh, and on the table there is a book. And on top of the book, there is a board. Sort of weird. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the, the book has bookmarks, and the bookmarks are where the UI icons are. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, it actually looks nice. It looks and nice. Clearly, they played pop. It's very populist-inspired. Yeah. Across from you, you've got a dwarf-looking guy, angry-looking dwarf sitting yeah. there playing with you. Well, he's not really doing he, anything, he, but he's, he's, he's there for the ambiance. You're talking about a guy in the background? I thought yeah. that was the evil wizard oh, looking down at you. He doesn't look like right. a dwarf. Oh, he looks kind of. I mean, dwarfish. let's you know, look but, how tall he is. He's barely taller than the table. This is a perfect time to head over to the port comparison. Okay, for, and I'll explain why. Keep going. So anyway, this uh, you know, I was able to to get out of the you know the dungeon. You know, you you go through the floors. Combat is very very simple. Yeah, you basically just attack and you get attacked. Um, you start out fairly strong in the game. I didn't have anybody die on the first in the first level. You actually it gives you a chance to not suck. Yeah, which yeah. is great. It's 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 a great. The first level is a great tutorial. Uh, I had some trouble with it at the beginning because I forgot about the search function. Yeah, and I was like, I can't get out of here. Finally, I used you know I I'd, I'd explored all I could and I used the pass through rock function uh, that the wizard I cast that on the elf so the elf could go through and I was like, well, here's how you get to the uh, here's how you get to the stairs. But I couldn't get anybody else out. Well, you have to use the search function. Finding hidden doors yeah. is a big part of this game. And detecting traps. Yeah. You know, I wanted to mention just briefly while Boat mentioned it. The, the, I played the DOS versus a lot this week. All right. I'd never played it before. And the DOS version is much, much uh, more colorful than the Amiga version. It, the Amiga version, the, for the, whatever reason, it seems muted in a, in a weird way. And the characters look kind of gray the looking. The evil wizard looks much more like a wizard right. in this version. Right, that's right. Uh, and But it's funny, I've, having played the both, and also I thought movement was easier in the DOS version, but it was a lot jumpier in the mm. DOS version, mm. which is not good. The way you move your characters in this, they give you multiple options. You can sort of click with your mouse where you want them to go. There's also a little, like, joystick gimmick down yeah, in the corner. Yeah, it's like a compass. That lets you click that way to go, which mm -hmm. I use, actually, I use both. And the good thing is the compass thing lets you know where you can and can't move. Because yes. yes. there's some rooms where there's crap in the way that doesn't look like it's in the way. You I know? really wish that more games that were like this from this perspective had that functionality. That's really, really good. Yeah, but I, I mean, nevertheless, uh, the DOS version of this, I would recommend it. Provided you can get used to it, it's, it runs a lot faster than the Amiga version. This is that era where the DOS was sort of starting to catch up. But having played the both, they play pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And that's funny, even the Amiga graphics aren't really, they're less colorful, but they're not worse. Yeah. I mean, I think they look similarly, they're, they're more stylish. But anyway, you can see that like, it doesn't look like that the Amiga version was derived from the no, PC I would, version. I wouldn't I was, say that. I was surprised so, to read that. You know, we've talked about the game. We've talked about the mechanics and how faithful it is to the board game. Yeah. Let's actually talk about the, is this a good game? Either the board or the computer variety. What do you think? Uh, well, you know, when I was a kid, there was this game called Dungeon. It came out. It was a board game. It was a D&D &D board game. TSR made it. And it was supposed to be sort of like the D and D equivalent of like a board game, okay, but it was simple. It was much more simple than this, okay. And then when Hero Quest came out, I thought to myself, "This is like the natural progression of Dungeon, all right." And so it's just complicated enough to be deeper, deep, deep enough, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I, again, I hadn't played it a ton. So climbing into this this week, I didn't have to look at any docs. I didn't have to look at any reviews. I didn't look at anybody else's material. I just sat down and figured it out in about five minutes, which is good. Mm -hmm. That doesn't always happen, especially with a game like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the game, again, we mentioned it doesn't have a lot of uh, words in it to tell you what stuff is. You don't need them. There's not a whole lot of stuff you need to learn. There are only a few commands. The magic is straightforward. The, the rule book has what all the magic spells do, but you could probably figure it out most of the time. There are a few, and then... And it'll also tell you what they will work on, okay? Because that's also something. Some spells don't work as well, like, say, the undead, all right? Stuff like that. 
Uh, but with all that said, I enjoyed it. In fact, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I played this a ton. And the reason I played the DOS version, I just happened to have it installed on a terminal near me when I was killing time at the job and sat down and played it there for a good while. And it's fun. Uh, it's, um, it's probably not deep enough for a lot of people. Okay? Uh, if you are a fan of Laser Squad or something like that, this probably won't uh, do it for you. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. But if you want something light and fun, and you really, what would make this pretty entertaining is to play with your buddies. That'd be, you could do it. If you guys all sat around the keyboard and, and did it, and you could do it with no problem. It'd be kind of fun. I wager this works quite nice on Amiga Live. I wouldn't be surprised that this is a perfect thing to play on there, mm -hmm. you know, with your friends. Uh, so overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, I also tried the uh, uh, the actual add-on to see what it. I was interested to see if it added anything, any consequence uh, to it. And so there there was an add-on. I did try it, and it basically just adds more missions. I mean, okay. that's literally all it does. Now, but, I know that on the, in the board game, when you look at the expansions, they actually add more complicated combat systems. There's ranged combat and stuff right. like that. So, well, Return of the Witch Lords, it, as far as I could tell, mm -hmm. and I went through two or three missions, mm -hmm. uh, it just looked like more scenarios. More scenarios. Right, now, there was a sequel to this, which I didn't look at because I thought we might cover it at some point in the future that may get a little more uh, in-depth. Mm -hmm. But with all that said... Um, the music that's there is good. PC's got more, seems like it's got more music too, mm -hmm. by the way, which is weird. But I thought, I, I thought was it, not a big fan of the music. I thought the opening title that. was, you know, no, fine. Be, but there's a song that plays throughout this that is not the best. There are some, yeah, there's some weird tunes. Yeah. But in all that, with all that uh, said, I like, like, I could set the kid down in front of this and say, play this, and he could play it, and he would probably enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And this, and someone like myself who doesn't usually enjoy games like this, I really had fun with it. I can see why it's popular. Uh, amongst people. Now, when you played this, did you play with four separate characters, or did you just play with I one? played with four, I played with two, and I played with one. Mm -hmm. I usually do three. I Was it more fun with four? Eh, I mean... See, I'm, I'm going to say no. To me, it gets pretty tedious with four players, and a lot of the game is you're racing to get to the exit, because the first person gets the exit usually gets yeah. some kind of bonus. Yeah. And so when you're playing all four characters, you know, it's... That part of the element is... Yeah, is yeah, really. Lost. It's not sort of not the way it was meant to be played mm -hmm. by one person. And there are... Listen, the game isn't perfect. And, I, and I'll go into the reason I think it's not. Number one, that you're you're rolling or spinning the die or whatever to get your... How many move points? Well, that gets old when you're just in a big, long hallway and you keep rolling ones and twos. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. You're just like, here we go. Here we go over and over. Yeah. So they this is when being like a board game fails them. Right. Uh, the combat... Is uninspired. Your guy doesn't change his Roy changes looks at, uh, uh, and when he fights, even if he didn't have a sword, it always looks like he's got one. Mm -hmm. uh, the monsters are, eh, you know. I think I think everything is well drawn. I mean, it's okay. They didn't they didn't spend you know tons and tons of development money on animation, right? Well, and really, I mean, I guess you're not going to go too far from the source. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you're, this is a computer game. And this was ninety one. We could, I mean, we had battle well, chests. I was going to so say, would you something. would you prefer to have battle chest style animations in this? It, well, it would have given this game. I would like the option, if mm -hmm. I'm honest, to, instead of having turn based, mm -hmm. having like battle chests where I'm not battle chests, but the uh, archon. No, no, well, I'm talking about battle chests where you know it's still turn based, but you have really really cool animations. That would have been great. But I, I would have, I would rather have like an archon thing. But I would have settled for battle chest. Mm -hmm. How about anything? <laughs> How about that? You know, you also get to the point where you know you're screwed, mm -hmm. and so you just have to basically yeah. ride it out till you're dead. Yeah, yeah that, those, you those situations suck. And so, and and uh, you know, you get gold in this, but you've got to get out with the gold. Mm -hmm. And so that's something else. There's a lot of te you can get tedious with the searches, mm -hmm. you know, and you sort of have to kind of search everywhere, right? You know, because there's all kinds of floor traps mm -hmm. and pits. Now, I will say I do appreciate the fact that the the game does tell you when you try and search. If you've searched the room before, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't give you your turn back, but it tells you that you've searched. I the do. Room I before, like yeah. that as well. So we, I, I'm, I'm for it. What did mm -hmm. you think? I overall, I think this is a solid game. Yeah, I do. I think that this game, any game that sets out to emulate a board game, and I mean, this is they accomplished what they tried to do. Absolutely, I, I agree with that. Now, does this make you want to try the Hero Quest game? Absolutely, I'd love to sit down with you and play Hero Quest in person. Well, we had to borrow it. <laughs> I might get dicey. Borrow from a guy, you know. Uh, 
the uh, of course this did have a sequel. It did have the. Uh, I will say if you're if you're interested in trying to load up the uh, the uh, second game, uh, Return of the Witch, the expansion. I like the fact it's got an expansion, by the way, because I can see a scenario where you could buzz through these missions eventually pretty quickly, yeah. especially if you juiced up your guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I like the fact that Return of the Witch Lord is there. If you wonder what that mystery square on the on the top screen is, that's the the last square is the expansion. You click on it, it'll tell you to ex- insert the. Uh, Expansion mm-hmm. disc, and then you're good, and then you're good to go on that. Um, review wise, both Lemon, boy, this barely missed the mark. Seven point nine nine. I would say this is easy, an easy eight. Plus. This is a B game for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it got pretty good reviews. Amiga Ash gave it eighty seven. Amiga Computer gave ninety. Amiga Format eighty five. Amiga Joker. They hate everything. Sixty three. Of course, they are Germans. They're probably playing board games fifty times more exactly. powerful than this exactly. one. Exactly. Uh, Amiga Power gave an eighty. Cu eighty one. The final score after you smush it all together, the average was an eighty one percent, which that sounds about right to me. How do we do on the Discord boat? We got one review this week from the one and only Lobsterminator. He says the game that forced Sierra to change the name of their Heroes Quest series into Quest for Glory. This game oh. is simple in a good way. You don't need to understand complex rules and systems like in more serious RPG games. Good light strategy game to play when you don't have hours to spend. I'm also a fan of turn-based games on retro systems because you can slowly play a game on the side while doing modern things. Simple doesn't mean easy though, so you do get a good challenge. The graphics are fine for this type of game, but the music could have been better. This deserved a good atmospheric dungeon exploration soundtrack to set the mood. Mm. Well worth a try. Seven out of ten. You know, he brings up a good point there, Lobby does, which is this is a great kind of game to just have on when you because there's nothing there's no wandering monsters. There's nothing that happens in real time. And normally you're like, eh, but that's good sometimes, especially if you're like at work or you're on the phone or you're doing something at home. You can just throw this thing on, mm-hmm. play around, go do what you're doing, come back, and just keep playing yeah. it. It's got a save feature as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. So And it does have persistence. You know, you can build your guy up slowly. Yeah. You know, you get more and more powerful. So there's a reason to keep playing. And it really, I will say, again, this is a good one. To, if, if you want uh, a baby's first uh, point-and-click strategy turn-based game, this would not be the worst choice. Not at all. Because... Uh, it gives you a little taste and of the it, or, it, of the more you know the bigger meal. It introduces you into, into some of the same concepts that you'll use in a game like Laser Squad. Yeah, um, I did look this up on the eBay boat just to see how it was going on there. I thought it might go for the big money. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw these going for I saw one up for now for thirty bucks, and these are in the UK. And I saw a couple had sold for between eighteen and thirty four dollars. I would have thought that this would have been one of the higher dollar I th- games. I think this was a big seller, mm-hmm. and I think that diluted. Mm. Uh, the demand for the game. But overall, I think this one is a big winner, Boat, and I think you do too. Yes. Are you a sketchy tech? Do you have the right tools for the job? Have there been incidents? Next time, don't try to fix it yourself. Send your broken Amiga to Retro Rewind. Get a full diagnostic, a reasonable estimate, and the peace of mind knowing that your machine is in the hands of real technicians with decades of experience and cutting-edge repair equipment. Save 10% off your repair with the promo code AMIGOS10. Thank you to RetroRewind.ca for supporting this episode. All right. We're going to uh, preempt the news this week because we got a package in the mail. This is a, this will be a quickie, and I did zip this open for the, for because Bo, if you recall, had trouble in the past opening gifts. Lots of people don't have a section of their head that's completely flat, but I do. How did you develop this uh, trait? Well, years of training. They call it, you know, you got your your iron thumb, your yeah. iron, you know, in kung fu. I've got the iron flat head. Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Did you, uh, something tells me you get dropped. <laughs> in case you're wondering, listening at home, Bo was balancing a box on his flat head. So, Bo, read that note and show it to everybody. Says Amigos, thanks for the laughs and awesome community from Scooby. Oh, thank you, Scooby. Look at that. That's I think that's awesome. lovely. I'm going to put that on the wall. I love that tractor paper too. I love I've been it. Held that I know. Time. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I look at the printed out. Mm. It looks like what? Do you, what kind of computer do you figure that is? That's Both an old the, TRS-80 model. That's what three. I'm thinking. Yeah. Look at that. It sprung from both drives. Yeah. Now. He told me that there's there's something in there for me and something in there for you. Oh, and okay. we would know what they were. Okay. Well, this is 
a Mr. Do uh, Marquee. Oh, very nice. Isn't that fancy? This will go on the wall. Now we both love Mr. Do, so we I don't do. know. I don't What's know. What's the this next is thing for. in there? The next thing is WWF oh, Wrestle. Oh, look at that! I bet this one's for me. Mm. These are tiny little marquees. Isn't that nice? Yeah, both? that's very nice. I'll be hanging those up in the arcade, man. Now he sent us also a thing to review. Oh, okay. Now that is open that up, Bo, okay. if you would. This came from another land. Yeah, and there's a story behind this, but long story short, he didn't need it or want it. Oh. And I knew it. you've got you you've got the old uh, uh, driver. This is the drive clicker. It oh, makes your drive click okay. like a, an actual drive. Well, I will. He I thought will. we might want to do a review on that, and I yeah. said, "Heck, we'll." Just drop it right on the ground. And it's destroyed. His review, not sturdy <laughs> enough for John Bodenkar Chalmers. A few things are. Look at this. It even comes with an internal power split. Very field. nice. So look for that. That'll give you something to do, Boat. Thank got, you you're, very much, you, you got yeah. too much time on your hands. You know, I, it's funny. You know, would you have ever thought to yourself, boy, in the future... When we're still playing games on our old computers, we're going to miss the sound of the drive. It does it help to have it. I do miss it. I'm not going to lie. So there you go. That is one That is one thing I do miss. Thank you so much, Stu. Yeah, Scoop. Awesome. We, we appreciate that. The little marquees are just dandy. We, mm. we really appreciate that. Uh, I think these are magnetic, too. Really? They're not. <laughs> You're an idiot, Boat. <laughs> he tried to stick it to the wall. It didn't work. Um, while we're here, Boat, and before we close up with the YouTube channel stuff, let's talk about uh, a little item that's, gonna, that's, that's honing in the view, Boat. It's a little thing we call Boat Fest 2023. I think we could get into this thing full-chested and, and uh, happy here now that we're entering the final few months before it goes down. Tell us what you've got in store for us this year, Boat. Well, Boat Fest, if you're not aware, is our annual vintage computer festival held in downtown Hurricane, West Virginia. Yeah. Last Scenic. year, last year's Boat Fest uh, uh, broke all the records, surpassed all expectations because it actually happened. And people showed up. Yeah. It didn't break all the records. <laughs> it broke the record of two. Right. I was anticipating. <laughs> so uh, this year's Boat Fest, we're, we're going to make it bigger and better than ever before. This year, we're holding it in the Copper Room above Connolly's Irish Pub on Main Street of Hurricane Perfect. Uh, you are, uh, we have people coming in from all over the world. Yes. Uh, we got Graham coming in from Australia. We've got Pajaco coming in from the UK. Nah, I can't believe it. Of course, it. folks from all over the United States and Canada, the whole Canadian contingent will be returning again. Yeah. We're going to have tons and tons of computers set up, some consoles. We're going to have trivia. Uh, Pac Billy and his brother are in charge. They're like the gaming committee. They're going to set up some fun events for people. Oh, Awesome. There's going to be a uh, retro auction by a professional auctioneer, The Brent. Oh, man. I can't Guard wait. your wallets, everyone. I can't wait for him to don that giant hat. Oh, man. Uh, the Brent is also hosting another small joystick fighting game yeah, competition. Yeah, I believe it's Mortal Kombat this year, mm. but Mortal Kombat 2, I okay. believe, is the game this year. So, if this sounds appetizing to you, head on over to BoatFest.info. Uh, there are still limited tickets available. We have sold about half of the uh, available tickets. Yeah. So get on there, and uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, you know, Hurricane is uh, pretty centrally located if you're anywhere in the mid-Atlantic. We're about three hours south of Columbus, uh, and uh, we are about six hours east of Washington, D.C. Yeah, and I will say, West, uh, Hurricane East. is not out in the sticks. It's directly beside the interstate. Yeah. It's literally within a mile or so of the interstate. So there's no trouble getting here. Listen, if you live in the U.S., there's no excuse. If you don't come to this, you're going to be thinking to yourself, man, I'm missing the good times. Mm. Listen, I dug out the Super Cassette Vision this week. Oh, yeah. I was like I was like Indiana Jones <laughs> trying to find this thing, and I, I uncovered it. I'm going to bring a menagerie of weirdness to this thing. It's going to be awesome. It's gonna be, and the thing is, unlike a lot of these places, we're going to have every sort of computer. Cocos, Ataris, Amigas, Commodore 64s, Jaguars. Anything you think of will be here, and it should. I guarantee you there will not be an assemblage of this kind Anywhere in West Virginia, that's for darn sure. Very true. It should be a happening uh, boaster. Um, before we go, I just want to go over a couple of things that we've put out on the channels this week. Uh, if you missed it last week when we filmed that, myself and the Brent hopped over to do ZX Spectrum, R. Sinclair. It was how to be a complete B word boat. Mm, the old B the word. Old B word. I'm glad you weren't on this one. There was a there was a, a, more than a little bit of cursing. I would have been uncomfortable. Yep. <laughs> You probably would. It's the same thing. And the thing is, as soon as the cameras are going to all be cursed, it's like a sailor, folks. He does it. Uh, and then, uh, boy, you don't want to miss this one. It, me and Brent on ARG Presents, it was dance games. Mm -hmm. Listen, 
I'm not going to lie to you. Where there was no dancing by me or the Brent. So it's safe to go over and check that out if you are so inclined. And on the stream team this week, hey, look, we've got our old standards back up. On the Amigo stream team channel, we've got uh, our good buddy 48K, who will be at Boat Fest. Yes. And he he was doing a screen model at Atari Lynx. And our good buddy Happy Coding is back with his uh, instructional ZX Spectrum programming uh, shows. And so I've got a couple of those ready to go out next week as well. So that should be a good time. So please... If you haven't already, uh, give us a look, and if you would, subscribe to both the Amigos Retro Gaming Channel and the Amigos Stream Team. We would appreciate it, uh, but it would go a long way. Aaron, what are we going to be playing next week? Let's have a look, bud. Deflector. That's right, Deflector. Deflector. It's been a long time. We have played this one before. We played this on the Specky, didn't we? That's right, we played this on the Spectrum way, way back. I'm looking forward to seeing, because I enjoyed this one. This one is, is, is uh, you know, I don't like all puzzle games, but I like a good mirror. This is this is a real, I mean, I'm actually, I kind of like it when we come on to Amiga st- versions of stuff we put on the, on the ZX. Because, I mean, I expect a certain difference. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. I don't want a straight port. Mm-hmm. I want it, I want an Amiga this sucker up. Mm-hmm. You know, because the ZX is limited. The Amiga... Should be able to blow this thing up big time, Boat. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it because I enjoyed this one the last time we tried. I sucked at it, but I'm hoping I'll do better this time, Boat. Yeah. And, of course, we want to thank our amazing uh, Patreon community, our Amigos Game Selection Committee. I believe that Graham W. Vebke selected, uh, nominated Deflector. The committee voted on it. We want to thank our Twitch subs. Uh, we do record the show live every Friday around 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, head on over to twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming if you want to join in the chat. We want to thank all the folks that are in the chat. And, uh, guys, we will see you next time. Until then, adios. adios.